Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's Kafir Middle East update. It's the week of December 3rd. And if you haven't gotten this blessing or wish yet, let me wish you a happy Hanukkah. Um, news bites. Before we jump in, remember, grab the PDF PowerPoint. Uh, website, holygroundexplorations.com or just click the link on this YouTube page. Most of the time we have more information in the PDF PowerPoint that we do have time for in this YouTube video. So what's going on in the Middle East this week? Um, diplomats warned that Tehran, Tehran is literally weeks away. Let me say that again, weeks, not months, not years, but weeks away from obtaining enough material for a nuclear bomb. The delivery set, the, to deliver it is still an issue, but having the means or the product or what's necessary for a nuclear bomb, they are simply weeks away. So we know all these negotiations right now that are going on in Vienna, and you would think that the Iranians would sort of uh, chill a bit, but the uh, Revolutionary Guard spokesperson, the general, warns that Tehran, and this is such a, a olive branch for these nuclear deal negotiations, but his quote is that Tehran will not back off from the annihilation of Israel that and make no there's no doubt about this. He goes on to say, we want to destroy Zionism in the world. There's that olive branch for you. We get it. We use it. We're going to annihilate Israel. So where do we stand? We want to cozy up to this peace partner? Because let me tell you really quickly, first it might be for Israel, but guess who's next? Well, Let's go on. As part of, as a result of Iran's continual threats, their pursuit of nuclear weapons, Israel is, and we've been saying this over the last couple of weeks, Israel is weighing its options, um, especially if these talks fail in any way. Uh, the U.S. is telling Israel uh, not to attack, saying it won't work, but if Israel does strike, and this is from my friend Amir Safate. He goes on to say, if Israel does strike, there's the possibility that it can trigger an Ezekiel war scenario. All sides, Iran, Turkey, Russia, all sides are ready for a full blown confrontation. Well, and it wouldn't be a Middle East report if we didn't talk about COVID, right? Uh, just so you know, we'll get into a little bit more. Well, let me just get it out of the way. I don't know what's going on. This Omicron now, Israel shut down for a two-week period. I've heard both sides. I've heard this is the worst case scenario. And I've heard after two weeks, things are going to be wide open because bottom line is that it's not as strong, it's not gonna have the impact, it might be more contagious, but it's much more milder version. Bottom line, as I stand right now, I still don't know. But I find this information, and again, before I share this, let me just say to you, don't, I realize every single human life is valuable. So let me get that, let me state that. But the statistics tell us that COVID-19, although a serious disease, but it bears constant repeating that the recovery rate in Israel for COVID is between 97% and 99.5%. The recovery rate from COVID. Okay. <clears throat> our um, major ticket items that we're covering this week, the Vienna negotiations, uh, Bennett, Prime Minister Bennett, sends a sharp message to the international community that they have to be tough on Iran. 
especially in regards to these nuclear negotiations as they're resuming. He goes on to say, Iran's goal is for the U.S. to lift sanctions while the Islamic Republic does almost nothing in return. The prime minister says, quote, Iran won't just keep its nuclear program, but from today, they'll get paid for it. His statement comes as it was reported that Israel's been sharing intelligence with the U.S., showing that Iran's taking these massive ste steps to um, prepare to enrich uranium to the 90% purity is what's needed. And so the bottom line, as we said before, you would think that there would be some subterfuge, uh, you know, uh, but the... The Iranians are just coming out in so many words saying, when we get it, we're using it, we're going to annihilate Israel. What's Israel to do? So once again, uh, I think we're I'm not saying we're days away, weeks away. In the not too distant future, Israel will take matters into their own hands. I believe that. The question then will be, does this launch the Ezekiel scenario? What does the U.S. do? Wait and see. But in the meantime, pray. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for wisdom and be prepared. Remember, when it comes to the end of days, Jesus simply said, don't be deceived. Watch and pray. Well, again, anti-Semitism on the rise, um, crazy makers all over the place, uh, a Knesset member, this is mind-boggling to me, one of the parties in the Knesset, they gave the paper-thin coalition of Naphtali Bennett's government is obviously Arab, Islamic, and a quote from the leader of that party, the Temple Mount belongs to Muslims only. This was from uh, Mansour Abbas on Thursday, kind of the head of the United Arab List Party that makes up the coalition in the Knesset. He addresses the increasing trend of Jewish visitors to the Temple Mount, pledging to do everything in his power to stop it. The Knesset, however, with that being said, there does seem a ramping up from the Israeli side of things. The Knesset Educational Committee has also recommended that the subject of the Temple Mount and its significance in Jewish culture should become part of the mandatory curriculum for Israeli Jewish students. I think I've shared this before, but it's been 20 years uh, and that Sharon and I have been going to Israel. And I think early on when we were going to Israel, if we brought up the issue of the Temple Mount, the majority of Jews, Israelis, had no interest in the Temple That's always floored me. No interest whatsoever. But as the years have gone by, there's more and more and more interest. No big surprise here because... I think if you know anything about, well, I don't know what your personal eschatology is, but ground zero in the end of days will be the Temple Mount. And God, after whenever the rapture of the church takes place, will again reinvest himself in Israel. A subject for another time, obviously. But again, no big surprise here that a Knesset member saying, an Arab Knesset member, the Temple Mount belongs only to the Muslims and he will do everything in his power to keep Israelis off the Temple Mount. And then we have Hebron, the Western Wall. It's Hanukkah, by the way. Now, Hamas has threatened violence and called on Palestinians to protest if President Isaac Herzog follows through with the scheduled Hanukkah lighting where? Machpelah, Hebron, the cave of the patriarchs. 
I don't think it gets more Jewish than that. This is Caleb country, right? Hebron, David ruled from Hebron. Abraham buried in Hebron. And yet, the Muslims claiming it to be their own, that Israel has no part, there's no historical significance to Hebron to Israel. Once again, I think I've mentioned Baligan means crazy maker, and that's what's going on today. Western Wall, it, it doesn't just stop there, but uh, Hamas is also threatening violence because the Israelis have the nerve to actually light the Hanukkah menorah on the Western Wall, okay? Again, claiming it's not yours, it's ours. Now, just this week, however, things couldn't get any worse. The United Nothings, or at least that's what they're referred to in Israel, the United Nations General Assembly approved a vote of 129 to 11, a resolution that disavows Jewish ties to the Temple Mount, refers to the site solely by its Islamic name of Al-Haram al-Sharif. The text referred to as the Jerusalem Resolution is part of a push by the Palestinian Authority Arabs to state to rebrand Judaism's most holiest place as exclusively a Muslim one. Well, that's this week's presentation of the Middle East update. I will say this, we're in Hanukkah at this time. I've done a, a YouTube presentation on Hanukkah. Um, I've given you in this slide number eight the address of that, the link. Uh, I find it fascinating that where we stand today is, is in the crosshairs of both Rome and Greek. The Roman threat is what? Very simply, the Roman threat during the time of Jesus is if you don't obey Rome, you die. Take a look at all of these crosses you mess with Rome, that's your fate. On the other hand, the Hellenistic, the Greeks, looked at the Jews and said, you know what our job is? You're going to become just like us. We're going to assimilate you into our culture. You're going to speak the language. You're going to dress the part. You're going to worship our gods. In the midst of all that, we had the Maccabees. Again, I think it's a I think it's fitting as we look at the world around us to see what's going on in terms of the Maccabees and Hanukkah. So I encourage you, check that out. It's on our YouTube page. So with that, we've prayed. We've talked about praying for the peace of Jerusalem. That's our report for this week. God bless you and Shalom.